I call this the five stages of dating. And sort of the dating, to me, like with my artists when I'm working with them, um, I always tell them that pretty much what you're doing as an artist, you have to date your fans or you have to give your fans the ability to date you as an artist in order to develop this strong connection that you sort of that you need uh, yeah, that you need to develop for the for the artists to come and you know come to your shows, buy your merchandise, stream your music, and so on. And this is also how you have to communicate with uh, with with your fans because um, a lot of a lot of fans in the beginning they're just you know they're at this stage over here where they just you know they're virtually drinking a coffee with you. But if you would come here now and tell them, okay, guys, do you here's uh, here's a link to my merchandise. Go and buy my merchandise. Like 99% of these people over here, they would not buy the merchandise. It's the same as if you go on a, to drink a coffee with with someone, and then on your first date or the first time you meet them, you actually ask them to marry you. That's kind of weird. So that's also, I get a lot of people a lot of time or not a lot of times, but sometimes I get people messaging me on Facebook like. Hey dude, like I don't know these people. Hey dude, here's my new track. I would love if you go and check it out. This is like to me, this is so weird that people actually do this to just, you know, message random people like here's my new track, go and check it out. It would be like me going to a restaurant, sitting down next to them, next to a random person, and be like, hey, I'm G, do you want to marry me? Like this is so weird. And before you come to a state where you where you have the ability to go and tell someone, like, here's my music, go and check out my music, here's merchandise, go and check out my merchandise, or come to my show or something, buy tickets. Um, you need to develop the person, you know, you know, you need to develop the relationship with, with this person. And I mean, as an artist, you know, at some point you have a bigger fan base, so you can't have a personal, personal connection with all the, with all the, your individual fans. So you need to build up what I call then the fan conversion fun, conversion funnel. So, which is this thing you like virtually have to build this for your artist project. And I will show you now how, how I do this with my artists in order to you know bring people into this funnel and you know to convert them until they get to the point down here where they you know where they're like a converted fan where they you, you could call them a super fan all right so how do we do this um, i'll take a quick detour and uh, just show you a little bit about uh, how a development of a fan could look like it doesn't have to look like this but uh, that's like one way that it could go about so you guys, let's say you make uh, like quite commercial music, um, your song or like the fan sort of listens to a song on the radio. And it's like, oh, it's a nice song. The, the fan doesn't know what the artist is, uh, the artist's name. They probably don't know the name of the song. They just hear it on the radio and then that's it. You know, it goes in here. They like it. It goes out of here on the other, on the other ear. Then, I don't know, the next morning they may be in, uh, you know, they're brushing their teeth, they're listening to their favorite Spotify playlist. At some point they hear the song again. It's like, oh wait, I've, he I've heard the song yesterday. Then, you know, it comes, comes to their mind again. Still, they don't know what the artist's name is. They don't know what the song name is like because they're brushing their teeth. Of course, they don't go and check it in the, in the Spotify playlist. I don't know, a few days later, they might see a uh, YouTube advertisement about the song, which is uh, targeted in the right way at them. And then they're like, thinking, okay, wait, I've heard this song on the radio, I've heard it in Spotify playlist, and then they start to get a little bit interested. So they check out maybe the artist's name, they remember the name of the song, but still it's just a very loose connection. Then at some point they're on Facebook and uh, a blog or an article about the song or about, about the artist just pops by. And this is the first time where they actually, they start to kind of, you know, like engage a little bit with the artist. They start to read maybe the blog article or just uh, read a little bit about it. Maybe from there, at some point they get an Instagram ad of a song, of the same song, and then it's like the fourth time they or the fifth time they're hearing about this. Um, they like it, they click on the ads, they go and follow the artist on Instagram. So now over here, it's the first time that you actually have a connection with the person. And they already heard about you, I don't know, four times, five times, six times, maybe they have these five YouTube ads for them to, or for you to really like connect with the artist. So let's say here we have a follower. Then, you know, they follow you and they see your content that, you, that you're putting out. The content has to be cool. It's, you know, they like your personality of the artist. Um, they get more and more involved. Um, then maybe at some point the artist does a collaboration with another artist that you like. And you're like, oh, cool, man. They do some, they're doing something together. Then you may go and actively listen to the disc discography of all the songs they've, they've put out before. Uh, from there, go and watch live sets of the artist because, you know, it's like cool stuff that they're doing. It's nice music. Um, they really get involved here. They start to do some background research. They check some interviews. Um, they may, and you know, it's like they get really involved with the artist. They know stuff about the artist. They know, I don't know, 
about the past, where they're coming from, you know, how they grew up and everything. They start to tell their friends about the artist or the, um, you know, the show, the music and everything. So at some point here, they, they're really becoming a, per a person that's also promoting you. It's like your small promotion army that's, that's developing over here. They go from there, maybe they go and buy a fan box, they buy merchandise, uh, buy vinyl and so, and so on. They may go and buy concert tickets for when you, when you come to their town, they're, you know, they go and buy the tickets. Maybe even they go and follow the artist on tour, you know, where they go like on several stops. Um, usually this is where most of the people stop in the pop world. You always have a few people that go a bit too far and they develop to become a stalker. So this is um, it's also something that, you know, you can put in the whole chain over here. But uh, anyways, so that's, it doesn't have to be like this and people, you know, they can on one day they can be here and on the next day they could already be here or it could also take a month or it could take a year until they sort of reach this point over here. But this is sort of a general, you know, like path that someone that listens to your music and develops to be to become a fan would go. So um, these steps here, I just, um, you know, I divided them into four stages. I call them four stages of fandom. So it's like a cold uh, prospect, a curious listener, a converted fan, and then a cult in the end. So it's like we're like four stages where fans, you know, could be in when they're, you know, when they're in a relationship with your artist project. So how would this look like? You have the, um, you know, you have the cold prospect here. You have the curious listener over here in this stage. Um, you have the converted fan over here, and then the cult down here, cult, or you could call them super fan. And yeah, so I will just now I will explain you these like four different types of per people, so that you can you as an artist that you can recognize them. You know in kind of what state this uh, this person is in. Starting with the uh, you know called pros prospect is someone that barely listens to mu to your music or di didn't listen to any music at all yet, um, or listens to to the music uh, subconscious like I don't know it's like he's not actively searching for it, it's just being played on the radio or it's just being streamed in a playlist. Uh, someone that just found out about the artist, and now for you it's super super important. Um, the called prospect expects to be amazed by the artist, so if you don't manage to amaze the cold prospect you don't like it does it's not enough if you're just there and they're like oh yeah it's nice you know and then they don't think about you further you really have to amaze them with the music that you do with anything anything sort of that you're doing so if you don't amaze them then the interest gets lost and the prospect just stagnates and this is usually the case for i don't know 80 90 percent of the people that come across your music they just you know they sort of listen to your music they don't like it so much because music is like strongly influenced by taste so they just stagnate but out of these um, let's call them 20 percent 20 percent they at some point they move on they get um, sort of they develop a curiosity about the stage uh, uh, they develop a curiosity about you about your music and everything and they move on to the next stage um, I highlighted this again because it's so important um, to mention this uh, that a cold prospect only develops uh, to the next day or develop to the next stage if he or she gets amazed by the artist, uh, just like with dating. So now we go back to the dating. If you meet someone for the first time, you go on a date and you know, you like the person, he's all right, but um, it's, it's, it's not enough to, to go on a second date. So you have to think of it as you know, a process of dating when you, you, know, when you, when you develop fans for your, for your music project. All right, so we went on the first date, you know, it went well, you like the personality of the, of the one you're dating or you, you went on a date with, so there's gonna be a second date. So you move to, on to the next stage which is the curious listener. Um, the curious listener is someone that enjoys uh, the brand aesthetic of you as an artist, um, likes the social media game, the stuff you do over there. It's interesting. Um, you may have an interesting personality. Um, you move by the story that the artist is telling. Um, so again, it's like really just like dating, you know, you, you went on, I don't know, 10 dates, 15 dates, you still like the person. And then from there, you you know you you may become uh, you maybe actually may become to be together to be in a relationship, um, and this is where then the listener starts to enter an emotional relationship with the artist. Um, and over here, we can play the same game again. Uh, if um, you don't uh, continue to inspire the person, the interest gets lost and the prospect stagnates. This is again, this is also happening out of these twenty percent. Let's say. I don't know, 10 to 15 percent, probably rather 15 percent that then, you know, these people, they get stuck at this stage, which is fine. You know, you can't always move everyone to the to the to the very low part of the of the whole funnel. 
But um, yeah, if you manage to, if you manage to, you know, continue to, to amaze them, then the curious listener develops to a converted stage, which is uh, over here the converted fan. Um, at this point, the fan collected enough information about you as an artist and really developed a strong emotional relationship. So if, let's say, one of their friends says shit about you as an artist, they really, they feel, um, they, they feel bad about it and they will tell them, like, this is not, this is not true, this artist is amazing, this and that. Um, this, uh, a converted fan actively seeks content about the artist, um, yeah, keeps up to date about what you're doing, um, what you're delivering. And here, this is the first time where you don't need to promote your music so much. You don't have to be like, hey guys, here's my new music, go and listen to it. You just have to be like, hey guys, here's my new album. And then by themselves, they will go and check out the art, check out the album and, uh, you know, find it interesting. So, yeah, this is really why, you know, how you, how you sort of, how you see if a person is a fan when they're, once they're, you don't have to tell them to do something, but they just, by themselves, they will go and um, check out your new music, for example. And then we can play the same game again. Um, you know, if you don't manage to amaze them, the interest gets lost, uh, the prospect stagnates or develops a distance to the artist. If you actually do, and now this is like we're talking probably like 1% of the initial 100% that went into your funnel. Um, these people, they develop to a cult stage, so just very, very little people, but they're so important because those are the so-called super fans. And <laughs> He's, uh, I teach at university, so I try to make this uh, presentation uh, easy to understand for my students. Um, so then when you're at, a, at this like, cult stage, you have these people that are, you know, they're like your promotion army. They're actively promoting your music of the artists amongst their friends. They go and buy merchandise, they come to your gigs, they go to concerts. And these true fans or super fans are actually the ones that um, sort of carry you financially as an artist. Um, there's this theory that um, it's like 1,000 true fans theory. I forgot the, the name of the guy who, who came up with this theory. That you need 1,000 of these people in order to make a living as an artist. Because then if you have 1,000 super fans, you will have enough fans which, is, which are like in the middle of the, of the conversion funnel which help with the streaming. And these 1,000 fans, they are enough for you to, you know, to go on tour, you know, to like... If, like tell these people, they, they promote your, your music act enough for you to go and play like smaller shows and everything. So, like com coming from this theory, it's like it said like once you once you develop one thousand of these people over here, then you have so many enough people in this whole like sphere that uh, <laughs> um, yeah that you can uh, you know that you can make a living as an artist. So that's like the whole you know the conversion funnel and now. I'm going to tell you how you can like virtually build this this kind of conversion funnel for you as an artist, in order to you know and to maintain this that it's just enough people always coming in from the top, and then it's just a matter of time you know to bring them through the whole funnel and then what you do what you have to do as an artist is you just have to continue making music, you know be good at your social media game and all these things and if you consistently develop them, it's not so much oh, from my perspective it's not so much about talent anymore. I mean you have to make good music but then it's really like you have sort of the formula to develop fans and at some point to be to, to make a living out of this for for you for your artist project all right um, what we have to do first is uh, we have to generate a top and mid funnel interest um, so you see this uh, here's a funnel my friend Fiona said it looks like a vagina but uh, <laughs> it's actually it's like the funnel um, you have the top funnel, you have a mid funnel area and a low funnel and you remember these like four stages we had them before it was uh, horizontal now we just we move them down you have like the cold prospects here in the middle you have the curious and uh, curious listener converted fan and down here you have the cult and you see like this is um, like a lot of people they come in here on the top and you for every stage you, you lose people and you have like very very little that, uh, that you know fall out of the funnel or yeah down here <laughs> Okay, so here are a lot of things that you can do as an artist, and I kind of grouped them together in this uh, funnel thing. Um, you might wonder, it's a lot of stuff, and uh, like always when I, sometimes when I teach this presentation to my students, they're like, they're telling me, okay, how am I supposed to do all of this? And I always like to tell them that uh, if you want to break it as an artist, you have to work at least 40 hours a week, it's a full-time job. So 40 to 50 hours a week you need to work in order to even have a chance to, you know, to, be, to become successful at this. And we can just start here in the top funnel. So most important, two to seven high quality social media posts per week. 
is super super important because this is how your um, this is how people can date you, how they can find information about you. And it's funny. I've had yesterday. I've had a talk with one of my artists about this. Was telling me that you know he feels like sharing personal information that no one really cares about this, but this is actually the, the wrong way of thinking because you have to put yourself in the situation of the fan, and the fan wants to know what you're having for breakfast. The fan wants to know, you know, when you when you do private stuff. The fan wants to know when you're out visiting your family and, and these kind of things. It's the same as when you're dating someone, you know, when you're dating someone and this person doesn't really share personal information, it's kind of weird, you know, you don't kind of you don't develop a, a feeling for the for this person. Like if they're just I know you meet with them and they're just talking about like random stuff, just about work and they never mention about their true feelings, how they're feeling about certain topics, then you know, you don't really connect with them. And this is it's super, super important for you that you go deep with like your your content that you post, that you, you know, you, you're emotional about certain things, you have topics that you're very interested in that you can present. And um, I always like to tell my artists to combine the whole music with another topic. Like, I don't know, one artist is very passionate about uh, animal rights, so she, she compares this. And it's important not to let this, you know, overflow the whole music topic, but just have it on the side, you know, add something to the, to, 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 to the stuff that, you, that you're telling your fans. So yeah, two to seven high quality social media posts, super, super important, takes a lot of time out of your day as an artist uh, to produce this content. Um, regular releases, in my opinion, also very, very important. Um, every four to eight weeks, I, it's good for the, for the Spotify algorithm to, to have regular releases. And around the releases, you then, you, then you can build release campaigns. Um, so you can like, I don't know, like just sort of jump from release to release every, every two months. So that's super important to do. Um, you need to do remixes so that so that people you know through remixes come into your conversion funnel. Of course, you also over the social media posts, people come into the funnel over the regular releases. Let's say you have a you're in the Beatport top 50 with your with your release, then you have people that recognize you. Um, then you do the releases. You have to do playlist plugging so that you you displayed in playlists. Uh, you do collaborations with other artists. Um, you have uh, guest appearances, I don't know, when you're more commercial and I don't know, you play like on a, like with another artist, you, you come to their show and I don't know, a radio show, you do a guest appearance there. Uh, you have to do blog promotion that you appear in like certain blogs. Again, this is all that people, you know, f most important is they have to come into the funnel up here. You know, somehow you need to grab their attention and get them to, to be in here. Uh, TV plugging, again, this is something for more like the, the commercial, commercials, uh, commercial genres. Um, hashtag strategies needs to be on point that you get discovered in, in the social media alg algorithm with the music. Um, social media reach ads, so you have to spend some money on. Uh, can you see this? Yeah, you have to spend some money on uh, you know interesting posts and to boost them so that more people see see this. Uh, radio plugging is the same thing. It's again, it's more about the about the commercial uh, genres. Well, maybe also for the for the, like underground house and techno that you try to get into radio shows of other artists, just so. Get to, to get really get your name out there, to even have the people to jump into this funnel over here. And um, you know, then they're in there and they start to, to hop, hop on the journey, they start to date you, they're in the funnel. Um, then it's super important to remarket them, so to have remarketing uh, Facebook, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, whatever, um, YouTube ads, to just get the attention again because they've heard about you, but these days the social, social media algorithm is uh, made in a way that I don't know, only like 10 to 20% of your followers actually see your posting. So you need to do remarketing ads over there to like grab these people to really pull them into the funnel. Um, over here in the mid funnel, you need to start to do online Q and A's. Um, you don't need to do them every week. You do them like once every six weeks or something. And 80% of these people up, up here, they're not interested in your online Q and A. So they will not show up to the online Q and A. But if you have, let's say in the beginning, you as an artist, you have 50 people showing up to the online Q&A, you know, already know that these people, they are not as, you know, the random people up here, they're already the ones that move down your funnel a bit further. So it's super, super important to do these online Q&As, even if there are just a few people in the beginning attending, because these people, they're worth so much more already than the hundreds of people up, hundreds of people up here, because they're already, you know, they're not just loose people anymore, they're already a bit more converted. Uh, you could do at some point you could do a free sticker campaign. I don't know you make a post and you tell everyone Hey, who wants to have a free sticker of me? Just send me your address and I'll just mail this one to you again There may be like 50 people 
emailing you, but these 50 people are so important. They're so much more important than the people up here. So like a lot of people then they think, okay, well, I have 2000 followers or 3000 followers and only 20 people that want free stickers from me. This is like, it was such a bad idea to even do this, but it's completely normal that from these 3000 people up here, not everyone wants to have a free sticker because they're still at a stage where they're not dating you enough to, you know, to be really engaged with you as an artist. Um, at some point, it's important to do an artist documentary. Again, this is something you don't have to do every month. Like maybe every three years or something, you, you can do an artist documentary about yourself. And this then just sits on YouTube so that the people that are moving down the funnel at some point, they, when they want to research information about you, when they want to find out more about you, they have the opportunity to go and check out this artist documentary about you. Um, you have to do after movies here, um, behind the scenes, um, super, super important community management. That's um, especially the bigger artists that I'm working with. I always see the same shit. They're telling me, oh man, I get so many messages of people that want to talk to me on social media and I don't have time to do this and I just don't answer the comments. And it's like the worst thing that you can do because the people that from their perspective, they are, they're already taking the time to send an email or send a message to the artist. They're already so far down in the conversion funnel that they want to date you. They're actively showing you they want to date you as an artist and you just don't reply to them. It's like someone really likes you as a person and wants to date you and it's like sending you WhatsApp messages. Hey, can we go for lunch? Uh, how are you? How was the day? And these, these sort of things. You just don't reply. Then, you know, at some point this person will also stop trying to date you. So you will lose this fan. And uh, again, this is something, you know, it takes a lot of work. Like for most of my bigger artists, we have, uh, we're actually outsourcing this. So it's not actually the artist that does answer these comments. We have like, I have this one girl that sits in, uh, in Turkey. She's, she's very good. She does like in the name of the artist, she's messaging with the people. Um, all big artists do this. So when you message with a big artist, 99% yeah. <laughs> it's not the actual person, but uh, yeah, anyways. Um, but yeah, this is it's so important because this is how you develop a relationship with this person. And only once you've, you were able to, to develop a relationship with this person, they move down to this, the final stage down here where they're the super fans. And at this point, stage, at some point, you might want to do merchandise. These people, they will go and buy merchandise. They will buy a hoodie for fucking 30 euros or something. And uh, you start to make money off from them. Um, these people, for them, it's super important to do meet and greets every now and then to, you know, to meet them, to give them not just a virtual experience talking to you, but actually to, you know, to meet you at a gig. For example, with my artist Magdalena, we have, um, yeah, we always try to, after the gig, we try to stick around and see there are always people coming and they want to talk to her, talk to her as, as a person, as an artist. And for them, this is like years later, they're, sometimes they're, they're messaging me like, hey, you know, three years ago you were playing in uh, Brazil and, uh, you know, you probably don't remember, but we, after the show, you know, we spoke for like five minutes, like this is so big for them. And these people then, what they do is they start to tell their friends, all of their friends, they will know that they like Magdalena. They will, when they're at the party, they will put on music of Magdalena. So that's really how you get like people actively promoting you as an artist. And it doesn't cost you anything. It costs you five minutes at a gig where you just chill out after the gig, you hang out anyways, and just speak to the people. Um, for Magdalena, we have a uh, private Facebook group where we invite people where we feel that they're the super fans. So these are the ones that I don't know, in the, at shows they're in the first line, like the whole time in the first line, like crazy about it. They, they're the ones that come and want to take pictures with her afterwards. On social media, you see it pretty clearly because the ones that are always commenting that are, you know, you see when, when they're sharing stories, uh, I don't know, like new releases coming out and they share the release and they tag Magdalena. Then for us, this is always something where we go and they message them like, hey, we've seen you're very interested in Magdalena. Don't, or like in the name of Magdalena, we say like, hey, thank you so much that you're sharing my music. We have this like private group for super fans. Do you want to come into this group? And like, this is always like, they're crazy. They go crazy about this because then if you're so special and the group is just a Facebook group and I don't know, we post in there every few weeks uh, when she's in the studio, you know, when she's like working on a track, we ask them, Hey, do you like this drop better or that one? Or we did, um, we did like a Zoom session where, you know, we post a Zoom link and then all these people, they could come together on Zoom and they were just talking to, to Magdalena on Zoom. Um, in there, whenever we go on tour, we post, or we, we post in there, hey, we're in Madrid this weekend. Uh, we have like three guest list spots. Just comment under the post and uh, you can have a guest list spot. And um, people love it. They're, they're really loving it. And uh, because we give them something, they're so much more willing to, you know, to do something for us, you know. And
a release coming out, then we post in the group, hey guys, we have this release coming out. It would help us a lot if you put this on, you know, you save the track, you put it in a personal playlist on rank number one, and you tell your friends to do the same. And they like go crazy about it. They're like, they do it. They, they help us to promote the music. And again, it doesn't cost us anything. It just costs us a little bit of work. For these people, we do VIP experiences. So, you know, some, we have like one guy, he's, he's super crazy about Magdalena one day. And uh, like one day we came to a city where, where he lives. And of course he came to the show and we invited him for dinner. And this is like, this was, he told me that this was the best day of his life, actually. So it's, it's so nice to actually then to be so connected with these people. Oh yeah, here inside a Facebook group, that's what I meant. Private contact, one-on-one -on -one messages. So we speak with them on messages. And uh, yeah, so these are pretty much the things. I don't know, there's probably more, you know, just be creative what you can do. And this is something that you need to do this every week. Like, especially these things over here, up here. And um, when you have releases, you know, for every release you need to just, don't just put out the music, you need to build a whole like release campaign with a playlist plugging, block promotion, um, social media ads, and you need to build all of the stuff around, around the release. And just pretty much for yourself, create this funnel. Try to get, always constantly try to get people up here to get them in the funnel. And then sort of, once you just keep doing this, you know, they will automatically kind of move through the funnel. And uh, over time you will create more and more super fans down here. And it's always going to be that, you know, you have people up here, you have people in the middle, you lose people, you create more super fans. Maybe at some point a super fan becomes a bit older, so they also, you know, they kind of vanish. But it's just something you need, as an artist, you just need to build a funnel like this, do all these things all the time. And then it's just a matter of time, you know, and it's good music that you have to make and do these things right. And then, you know, people will look, walk through the funnel and you will generate your fan base. And uh, with a fan base, you're interested in bookers, uh, you get bookings. Um, yeah, and this is how you build or you develop yourself as an artist. That's it. Uh, yeah, questions? Do we have a, I think we need a microphone for him so that the people on video, they can also hear it. If it doesn't work, ask the question, I'll just repeat it, and then we have it on. Hello, hello. Hi. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. now? Yeah. OK, perfect. OK, so you were talking something about creating like a big fan. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, when you are doing that, you are like doing something really nice with the feeling of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is really beautiful because you create something like a really special. But I think that could be, in one way, uh, dangerous or not dangerous is how you control that you don't cross the line. It's like a, because people, you know, feelings sometimes is really mm -hmm. strong and every every person is different. Uh, sometimes uh, there are people who they cannot control that and they cross the line of this fun moment. Yeah, exactly. That's when you when you then have a stalker. Like uh, you need to at some point you also need to draw a line like. You can be very personal, but for example, my artists, they never do stories from the bedroom. You know, they do stories from the living room, but they would never take the fan into the bedroom mm -hmm. and stuff like this. Yeah, of course, you have to draw the line at some point. And uh, I don't know, like norm people that, you know, that are like you and me that are just normal thinking, you know, they know when it's like it's getting too much. Like they realize that it's still, you know, there's the artist and you're the fan. But, you know, it definitely can happen that people, they kind of cross the line, they become a stalker and, you know, they get too involved. And about the communication and all this stuff for, for the fans, uh, what do you think that is uh, the best strategy uh, without using social media, like uh, going in, in the back or like uh, the traditional ways to communicate? What do you think that could be something? Mm, I don't think that this can work. Like mm -hmm. it's, you always have to do social media. I'm 100% sure that there are exceptions. Of, or like I would say there are some ex exceptions that define the rule, but it's like, Imagine you would date someone, like back in the days, it was possible to date someone without having a phone, you know? You would, I don't know, you meet someone, you would write letters, and this is kind of how you would connect with the person. Try to, now you meet someone in a club, and you tell them, well, I don't have a phone, you, the only way to reach me is you can send me letters. Like, 99%, you're not gonna, like, I don't know, marry this person in the end, because it's just how, how would you date the person? 
And that's just how people use technology these days. They use social media and you need social media as your tool in order to date your fans. So in my perspective, there's definitely no way around social media and no way around doing good social media and being very engaged, especially for up and coming artists at some point. When you have developed a big fan base, like uh, Dead Mouse, for example, is doing this, he doesn't give a shit about social media, but he doesn't need to because he already has so many super fans. And the super fans, they promote his music. So he just, you know, he just, I don't know, he sends a newsletter with the tour dates or the, the promoters that book him, they, they promote the show and then people, they automatically come. But for a newcomer artist, in my perspective, there's no way around social media. Okay, thank you. Hello. Okay. Hey. So um, I'm a super small artist just starting out in the house music industry. And so I've released three tracks mm -hmm. and my next one is coming out in like a month. And I just made like a little teaser, like a three second clip of the track on, on Instagram. And, and um, I have a few like super fans, I think, mm -hmm. like a handful of, of people. Um, from from Turkey or Istanbul, something like that, and they asked me if they if I could send them the track for the release, mm -hmm. and uh, should I should I do that or should I not do that? Mm, um, said you that are they like DJs or? Like I think two of them are DJs and one of them is just like a fan. I would when the DJs I would totally send them the track, like okay. because they would play it like for for my artist for every release like a month before. Of, of course, the track needs to be signed so they can steal it from you. It mm -hmm. needs to be signed already, yeah. but DJ promo for DJs is super, super important that other DJs play your music. Okay. So develop a friendship with them, send, always send them your music, be like, hey, here's my track. I would love if you can play it. If you're, I would love it even more if you can take a video playing the track, send me the mm -hmm. video so mm -hmm. I can use this for my, for my promotion. Okay. And I mean, why not? Like, yeah, maybe you lose a sale, which is like, I don't know, what ends up in your pocket is like a few cents. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's so much more important that you really connect with these people. and. Yeah, let's don't like don't think that they would like steal the song and quickly upload it to some to yeah, some platform yeah, yeah. like this is not going to happen because my first intention is like no yeah. but why not because no yeah why it's not special like, to them that they get it early exactly so. they get it and they will then show it to their friends they'll be like hey man look this artist you already yeah. sent me the unreleased stuff and like they would talk about you and yeah. like it's free promotion i mean yeah. you give them a track but uh, it's yeah for this day you make their day they will be very happy yeah all right awesome thank you <laughs> It. So if even he tries to sell the music, he's gonna win in the end because of the copyright. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So yeah. you're gonna have the right in the end, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, you should, you know, like the track should be signed already, and then if someone else then releases yeah. it, you can prove that you were the first one making it. Yeah. So, yeah. but I wouldn't even like think about this. Like yeah. zero point zero zero one percent of the people that do this. So just expect the good things from the people, and that they will just. You know, just show it to their friends and, I don't know, use it in their DJ sets. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, uh, <coughs> thanks a lot for the insights. Um, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering on how many cases does it work like this? Or are you like co-funding with the big artists, the smaller ones? Because I saw you're doing so much stuff and it's so expensive that I'm thinking, does it work as an artist or only for labels? You mean this conversion funnel? Or? Yeah, because... I've yeah, it works for artists, but we're talking like 10 years, like you oh. need to do this for 10 years and then at some point, you know, you, you at the point where you can break through. So, I don't know, 40 hours a week for like five, seven, 10 years and then, uh, yeah, you will have your fan base and you can start touring. I mean, you start touring in the process of it already, but... Yeah, yeah, because that's for me a reason to work for a label because they're paying for this. And for me as an artist, it wouldn't make sense to invest in all these fields. So it would be interesting to know. If, uh, uh, well, for my, for my artist Magdalena, we invest serious amount of money. But for her, it's a bit easier because she's already making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But um, for up and coming artists, you don't need to invest like thousands of euros. But uh, I don't know. It's, I know it's tough. Like, and that's why not so many people break through. But in the beginning, you need to work 40 hours on your music and you need to work 20, 30 hours on a regular job. And all the money you make with the regular job, you need to reinvest into your artist project in order to have a chance to make it. It's really cool. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> what? It takes more than 24 hours. Yeah. 
questions? All right, if there are no more, I'm, I will hang out a little bit here. You can also just walk up to me or um, here's my contact information. I'm, sometimes I'm happy to, you know, to consult you in just a one-on-one -on -one session. So feel free to reach out to me or talk to me later. And uh, thanks for listening. Thank you.